Hello, dear viewer, thanks for joining me on another episode of the best PlayStation Now games with me, Samuel PlayStation. Today we're getting cozy by the fire and sharing some heartfelt stories. Not these kinds of stories, of course. Who reads books anymore? No, today we're wading through the waters of video game storytelling. And to do that, we must first ask a key question. What is a story when applied to video games? Indeed, what turns a game's narrative into its genre? When and how does a story become the driving force behind a game and its key characteristic? All those questions will be answered in due time. First, remember to hit that mother like button and subscribe for more. I don't always talk like this, but I can do if you're into that kind of thing. The truth is that story driven is a pseudo genre. All games, barring multiplayer, have a story. Even the late great Formula One 2016 has a story baked into its career mode. And yet, no game is solely story driven. At least some input from the player is required, lest it become one of those movies. For this video, I'm including games that strip back their gameplay mechanics in order to offer the player a lighter experience and let them unfold the story themselves. That being said, those gameplay mechanics still differ quite greatly, so I've split them up into segments. The first of which is the visual novel. Visual novels are the closest relative to classic literature. All you do is read. But where a George Orwell novel, for example, wraps incredible political and social foresight around its story, a classic visual novel is probably a harem with an all-female cast, each with their own take on the innocent schoolgirl that takes fashion inspo from the Anne Summers catalogue look. The only visual novel on PlayStation now turns the tables, however. Hakuoki Stories of the Shinsengumi casts you as a schoolgirl who accidentally enters the Shinsengumi corpse which is filled to the brim with eligible samurai bachelors. Personally, I find samurais a far more interesting demographic than schoolgirls, so I'm all for it. Learning the inner relationships of one of feudal Japan's most notorious samurai squads is very interesting, and Hakuoki is more dedicated to the politics of the time and the historical significance of the samurai than it is getting you into bed with them. Which is a shame because some of them are like, really cute. Apparently, the otome genre of Japanese dating sims is still predominantly enjoyed by males, many of which claim to be heterosexual. I don't mean claim like... I think they're lying. I mean, they have no inclination to dating men. I enjoyed stories of the Shinsengumi's world building, but I found its dialogue too verbose, as is the case with a lot of visual novels, and that saturates the main story. Like it or not, it's the best visual novel on PlayStation Now, because it's the only one. Walking simulators take the most basic of gameplay mechanics, movement, and pretty much stop there. Here are the top three. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is the prettiest of post-apocalyptic settings, its emptiness often accentuating its beauty. You explore the quaint English village of Yorton, trying to figure out where the bloody hell everyone's got to. You pick up on two main story beats, the final interactions between townsfolk as they realise something strange is happening, and finding out what that strange thing is. And it's the human elements that grip me, rather than the inhuman reason behind it all. All walking simulators are slow burners, but Rapture really slows down the pace while dialing back the interactivity, leaving the game experience to feel very passive at times. But treat it less as a sprint to the finish, and more as a gentle ramble through the English countryside, and everybody has gone to the Rapture will keep you guessing until the very end. Another vanishing act to unravel, the vanishing of Ethan Carter pits you as Detective Paul Prospero, who must find out where the bloody hell Ethan Carter has got to. You must find clues and piece together crime scenes, uncovering plot lines, character backstories, and hopefully who or what is behind it all. It took me a couple of playthroughs to figure out, which I'm usually adverse to, but the lighting, textures, and attention to detail make rural Wisconsin a sight to behold. Better than that, though, my second playthrough had moments where I'd find previously missed objects and, with an understanding of the endgame, have the penny finally drop. The vanishing of Ethan Carter begins saying, This game is a narrative experience that will not hold your hand. And that holds true. It's a game that rewards your curiosity the deeper you go. Monroe's mother was a fantastic painter, but she could never finish what she started. The Unfinished Swan was her favourite work of art, and in the wake of her death, it becomes a coping mechanism for her son. 
Now, my main takeaway from this game is to go easy on the brightness or you'll burn your retinas off. You begin with a stark white screen, but soon realize there's a whole kingdom that's your blank canvas to paint on. The king is a perfectionist, you see, and believed that no color was good enough for his kingdom, so he left it white. Several times I wandered, seemingly aimlessly, through this abstract fairy tale painting, feeling pangs of guilt as I splattered ink over walls and windows, only to turn around and see the journey I'd taken and the beautiful mess I'd made. If you flesh out a visual novel, you get what I'm calling interactive storytelling, where choice and consequence is heavily used to let the player direct the story. Here are the top five. Batman The Telltale series puts the onus on Bruce Wayne, creating tension and drama without donning the mask, a credit to Telltale's well-refined choose-your-own dialogue format. You have the option to approach scenes in suit and tie or suit and cape, raising the question of who's really the mask, Batman or Bruce Wayne? It's a question asked many times before, but the Telltale series is the first to let the player decide. Sadly, you only get the first episode on PS Now, which is one of the weakest episodes and kind of feels like it's just there to coax you into buying the season pass, which you definitely shouldn't do from the PlayStation Store, you'll find it way cheaper online. And that means I can't put it any higher than fifth in this list. Beyond Two Souls is the closest thing you'll get to a movie game. The Hollywood actors, the photorealistic graphics, the sweeping camera pans and tracking shots. It's also probably the last movie game, a standing realization that we don't want a game to play like a movie. Those film-like elements are not drawbacks individually. In fact, they began trends that many future games would follow. I don't even think the minimal gameplay is Beyond's biggest weakness, as other games in this list have a similar level of interactivity. It's the game's intent on being all story, along with the production value, that raises its expectations to film level. And what it delivers is a mash of ill-realized science fiction, action, teenage drama and thriller that just doesn't go anywhere. And a few years later, barely contends with video game narratives that are, you know, actually games as well. Heavy Rain is made by the same team as Beyond Two Souls and at first glance looks far more focused. A father, an FBI agent, a journalist and a private investigator are connected by their hunt for the notorious origami killer. Over Heavy Rain's 10-ish hour runtime, that premise falls quite hilariously apart. Characters routinely make you cringe at their expense, I'm gonna beat the shit up. and the game has become infamous for the result of failing its quick-time event sequences. I could critique Heavy Rain because in trying to tell a serious story, it comes off as obnoxious. I probably should be mad, but I kind of like it. The same way you watch a shitty horror film just to laugh at all the shittiness. So if you know what you're in for, I would recommend it. The Wolf Among Us was Telltale's first departure from The Walking Dead, but it's largely the same experience. A certain comic book darkness runs through Fable Town, an underground area of New York where exiled fairy tale characters like Snow White and the Big Bad Wolf live out their lives disguised as humans. Much like The Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us has an uncanny ability to create constant gnawing doubt. There are an array of recognizable characters that you'll befriend, antagonize, hurt or kill and subsequently be made to feel guilty about. There is no more a dreaded sight in a Telltale game than the words, they will remember that. This is the best blend of game and film for me. Until Dawn is a teen slasher movie on the surface where a group of friends travel to the woods for a remote holiday. But there's a pretty complex story underneath if you're willing to dig into it and your actions cause it to branch out in several ways, ending with up to all eight characters alive or dead. I think the horror genre fits snugly within this interactive story mold. Tension plays the most important role in horror fiction, written or filmed, and putting you in control of how the story develops multiplies that fact. You can stop playing whenever you want, the same way you can turn the TV off or leave the movie theater, but if the narrative has successfully roped you in and invested you in its characters, as Until Dawn does, you'll keep playing. You can't help it. And finally, this is a subgenre that I kind of just made up uh, that relies on mystery and intrigue to tell its stories, where progression is based on wanting to understand what's going on. Here are the top five. 1111 Memories Retold commemorates 100 years since the Armistice Treaty was signed in November 1918, ending the First World War. 
Rather fittingly, there's rarely a bullet fired in Memories Retold. Instead, you play as two people living on the fringes of war rather than the front lines. Harry is an allied war photographer. Kurt is a German soldier who enlisted to find his missing son. While I appreciate moving away from the battlefield itself, Memories Retold ignores the brutal reality of a war in which millions gave their lives for their country. The art style captures the theme of remembering, but Memories Retold paints too pretty a picture of war. You could easily call Limbo a platformer. I did, in fact. But it's in this list because it's very good at maintaining intrigue until the credits roll. The game's title is all the information you get, and it's all you really need. The eternal hope of someday leaving this strange, eerie and gruesome place. Don't expect much of an ending in the traditional climax and resolution sense. Don't even expect a beginning, middle or end. There is no beginning or end in Limbo, and the game drills into that sense of helplessness to great effect. The most therapeutic game on this list, Abzu sends you swimming through serene oceans teeming with life. While there are narrative undercurrents of climate change and marine conservation, the game's main allure is to bathe you in its art style. I still consider it story driven, however, if only because you are guided through Abzu so purposefully. Abzu's creative director was the art director on Journey, and the similarities are clear. It doesn't swell quite the same as Journey, in my opinion, but that's fine because Journey is on PS Now as well, and if you hang on for just a couple of minutes, you'll hear me sing its praises. These brothers are going through a tough time of things. First their mother dies out at sea, and now their father is sick, forcing them to gather a cure from the Tree of Life. This is a story of connection, which is compounded through the game's controls. The older brother is controlled with the left joystick and shoulder button, the younger the right. Synchronicity is a tale of two sons' greatest strength, but it's also a weakness. Controlling the brothers independently takes some getting used to, and if they cross paths so the left brother is on the right side of the screen, things get really confusing. To make things easier, I found myself controlling the two in unison, but this made some of the animations jarring, with both brothers moving in identical fashion. There are some clever implementations of coordination, but the majority of the game is spent running, jumping, and climbing. Then again, I'm focusing on story, not gameplay, and A Tale of Two Sons tells an impressively emotional story around family, love, and loss within just two hours. So here's the peak of immersive, engaging storytelling for me. Which is funny, really, because it's hard to know what's actually going on at any given point in Journey, where a mute, masked, nameless being travels to the heart of a distant mountain. Journey's story happens in the peripheries, a lost civilization, hostile AI lingering after the war and the call of the mountain. The 90 minutes spent exploring burnt desert plains and ancient structures left me amazed, confused and kind of emotional. It smacks of isolation, which makes any moment where you meet other real players very profound. I felt a surprisingly deep connection to whoever I met on my playthrough. I wanted them to finish their journey as much as my own. Journey proves you don't need things seemingly integral to a story, things like dialogue, exposition, character backstories or a clear good and evil. It is about the journey, not the destination. That's what I take this title's game to mean anyway, but I did study English at university, so I might just be trying to pull an analogy out of my ass. There's a big difference in terms of narrative, I think, when it comes to indie games versus AAA titles, so if you're expecting AAA games to come into this list, fear not, because I'm making a part two right after this one. Um, so these are other games that might belong to other genres, like shooters or RPGs, but they still have very good stories, um, you know, focused stories that are that take take precedence over action or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so if there are any in particular on PS Now that you want me to look at, let me know in the comments below. One other thing is to go check out my video on uh, Blue Shell. I'll leave a link in the description and right here somewhere on screen. Um, I've just started working with these guys. It's a really talented group of creators. We've all kind of banded together to create videos on all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of Nintendo stuff if you're into Ninjala and Smash Bros. Paper Mario, that kind of thing. Um, I'm covering PlayStation content primarily. I might do some um, Nintendo stuff later on, but I've just done a video on Ghost of Tsushima, and there's one coming up pretty soon on Horizon Zero Dawn 2, what to expect with that game. So uh, yeah, go check out that video and leave a like and uh, have a look around that channel. And if you like that kind of stuff, please subscribe. That'd be awesome. The only thing maybe else that could have been in this video 
is puzzle games. There are a lot of um, more indie titles with really good stories, but they, was, they were too heavy on the puzzle side. Um, games like The Swapper, Rain, Black Mirror, uh, The Spectrum Retreat, and The Turing Test, which has just come to PS Now, and I've seen some people getting excited about that. So if you want to see that, those games also have really good stories, so I've heard. Um, so if you want me to cover that, let me know. Puzzle games, adventure games as well, like Monkey Island and Sam and Max have really good stories. With uh, There's quite a lot of good wit in those. So adventure games is another one, uh, potentially. But like I said, anything, I'm, I'm in your hands. Whatever you want me to do next, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, uh, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Um, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.